par Shore Story. Ritan JB, produit ses d'Angorumon. Naomi Tokyo. Sun Tu. Several days before, in an overly stylized high-end Italian restaurant, which would have the highest ratings in Yelp, had the restaurant were open to the general public, the place is stuttered with the celebs of the city. While everyone seems to recognize everyone in the place, they nonchalantly mind their own business at their respective table. Denzel Washington is a well-known character actor, a tall handsome Afro-American, and also as of the late, a successful entrepreneur owning a string of classy restaurants. Denzel and Jessica Anderson, a tight pretty blonde girl, and also a professional stylist by day, are standing around at the end of the corridor which connects the kitchen to the main areas of the restaurant. Denzel is furtively eyeing the couple at one table in the corner, barely lit by the table candle light. Alex and Salacia Williams, husband and wife, are seated at the table of one corner of the restaurant. Alex is a former tennis star, with chiseled Southern European features. Salacia is also a tennis celebrity, an Afro-American with defined muscle tones, who has broken several world records. Salacia is wearing oversized black frame glasses, with a minimum makeup. Her hair is elegantly weaved up in the back, revealing her long neckline. She is wearing a simple black silk dress. While Salacia pours over the menu, Alex excuses himself for a bathroom break. Seeing him leave the table, Danzel signals Jessica to follow Alex. Meanwhile, Danzel casually walks past the table, almost, but turning his head ever so slightly, he genuinely acts surprised to see Salacia, who is munching on a piece of cybata bread glazed with extra virgin olive oil. Danzel is standing next to the table. Hey, how are you? Thanks, Felix. How's my cocktail today? Oh, hi. What, what are you doing here? Oh, so nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you. But what? Oh, you know what kind of like me? Do not be seen in a classy establishment like this? No. Come on. That's not. Dawnzel reaches out for the chair. May I? Yes. Of course. Dornzel pulls the chair closer towards Salesa and sits down. <laughs> so nice to see you here. Mm -hmm. So, how do you like my John? Excuse me? Like this place? Yeah, I own this place. Wow, that's so great. Yeah, yeah sure. No big thing. An awkward pause. They look at each other with an awkward smile. I just love this bread though. And this olive oil. So good. Dornzel beckons a waitress. Marilyn Stones, an aspiring actress, a salty dirty blonde waitress with a tight revealing black white uniform, appears from the near darkness. Dornzel smiles at the waitress, which is reciprocated, professionally. Hi Marilyn. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you. Mr. Washington, how are you, sir? Uh, you know, same old, same old. And listen, Carolyn, you know that the good old ciabatta bread and alba olive oil? Can you bring that up for us? Yes, sir. Mr. Washington, anything else? Marilyn glances at Dornzil for confirmation while he checks out the beauty of this waitress, from her red high heels to her well-made blonde hair. All right, all right. How about that badge we got yesterday? Was it Cabernet Sauvignon, 2014? Yes, sir. All right. Bring us a bottle. And, and that white truffle stuff, too. Dornzel winks at Marilyn and then smiles at Salesa. Marilyn disappears into the darkness, presumably to take care of the order. Ha ha ha! All right. All right. We're all set for now. Something special. My granddaughter in my joy. How cool is that? Like this? Uh, I, mean, I know. I know I'm gonna sound like this the old geezer that goes, Hey! Get off my lawn! You call me more often. Call me. I am just to you there. The last time we talked was like when you had that surgery or something like that. Okay, I'm sorry, 
DZ, I'll. Hey, you. Of you. They're okay. They hurt real bad sometimes, though. Okay. Okay, it's tough out there, but you gotta take care of yourself, okay? Salesa nods while sipping on the wine. Oh, by the way, there's something special out there today. I mean, you put out a great performance out there. Oh, thanks, DZ. But I lost, though. That was one hell of performance, no doubt. Thanks, DZ. An awkward pause. But it was a scene out there, right? I mean, it didn't look good, did it? No, 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 no. You did what you had to do out there. Like I say, it was one fine performance. Oh, thanks, DZ. I means a lot coming from you. You know, your support and everything. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Another awkward pause. Marilyn in a professional demeanor carries a silver tray with the items ordered and promptly places them on the table. She then uncorks the wine bottle with a uniquely shaped gargoyle wine opener and pours it into the two glasses. With the glass in his hand, he extends his arm for a toast. The two glasses clink. The two nod in unison. Salesa takes a sip, while Dornzil one-shots it. How do you like it? Wow. It's good. Now, you gotta try this. Rubbing his hands together. Dornzil grates a small piece of white truffle on a mini grazer over the small pool of the olive oil in the dipping dish. Then, Dornzil breaks a piece of ciabatta bread and dips it onto the olive oil laced with the bits of the white truffles. With the piece of bread held gingerly in his hand, Dornzil glides it towards Salesa's mouth. Come on now, say, uh... Salesa jerks backward in reflex, surprised by the unexpected, somewhat immature, gesture by Dornzel. Come on now, you should... DZ. I'm not a five-year kid now. Dornzel is taken back a little but recomposes himself, combing through the side hair with his hand. All right, all right, my bad. Ah, uh, there you go. Dornzel places the piece on the bread plate on Salesa's side. With the prim lady-like gesture, exaggerated a bit, Salesa places the piece in her mouth, using a silver fork. You see? It's all in the mind, as lazy as that may be. This restaurant, the candlelight, the table. It's all part of a series of momentary illusions. For example, let me do a little breakdown of said piece of the bread just digested by one, Salesa Williams. The bread piece firm and glistening with olive oil on the outside, but moist and spongy inside, melts away in her mouth, a wash in her saliva, already plentifully excreted, stimulated by the pungent smell of the white truffle. Then, her taste buds light up the neurons that she didn't know she'd ever had, which in turn fire up her most intimate sets of sensual neurons that shoots up waves of spasmodic pulses of pleasure. You can observe, her body in reflex, contorting and quivering in orgasmic response. In the time between the microseconds, during which these neurons of hers are working over time due to the stimulus overload, a waft of dopamine is released in her femininity, giving her that natural glow on her face. She can barely contain herself and sit still, until the hedonic pulsations slowly die down. Uh, mm, mm, uh. It's good, right? Everybody? Why yes. So Celestia, you don't mind me asking, who was the uh, pro quo, so to speak, in the deal? Huh? Uh-huh. You know your tape? What? What do you mean? Come on now, you cut? Oh, you mean, the award money? Oh. It was like 750,000 US dollars before taxes. Come on now, that's peanut money. I made your real thing. A sly smile to Salacia. I know Julia Silverman. Salacia's facial expression freezes stone cold, and she feels very vulnerable and exposed at that very moment. She looks around for some moral support, in particular, from her husband, who has been absent for some time, she starts wondering. continue.